from Strata in New York City, Strata plus a Dupe World, which is a conference that's brought to you by O'Reilly, and uh, O'Reilly Media is a partner of Silicon Angles, and uh, they've had us here, and for now, for a couple years, we've done several Hadoop worlds, Hadoop World and, and Strata have merged. So the Cube is our flagship product where we extract the signal from the noise. As I say, we bring you the smartest nodes that we can find. And, and we are here with uh, Justin Borgman, who's the, the co-founder and CEO of Adapt, and Scott Hauser, who's the Vice President of Marketing. Gentlemen, welcome to the Cube. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. us. Yeah, so appreciate you guys coming on. And uh, first of all, congratulations are in order. You won the Startup Showcase last night, I understand. And uh, the Startup Showcase is basically uh, a competition for the best startup, and uh, they do it every year at Strata. It's a big deal. There, I think there were 10 finalists last night, right? That's correct. So, uh, so well done, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. So, uh, Justin, a lot of people uh, don't know Hadapt. Uh, mm -hmm. We had Daniel Abadi on two years ago at the uh, Strata uh, uh, February 2011 conference, before you really started the company and sort of came out of stealth. Uh, just give us a high level overview of the company w and what you do. Sure, yeah, so we got started about two years ago. Daniel's my co-founder, he's a, a young professor at, at Yale. His prior research actually led to the founding of Vertica, so very, very sharp guy. I met him, I found his research fascinating, and that's really how we got started. And the basic idea was uh, to bring together the performance and functionality of an analytic database with the scalability of Hadoop and really converge these into a unified platform that allows you to use SQL to interact with structured and unstructured data in one Hadoop-based platform. And that was really what gave gave rise to uh, the founding of the company. Uh, since then, we've grown up a little bit. Uh, we have about 40 people today, you know, raised venture capital. Uh, we've got some production customers already using the platform. So talk about why that's important, the bringing the SQL to NoSQL. I touched yep. on it earlier, uh, but there's a lot of skill set around SQL, yeah. um, and there's not a lot of skill set in the whole Hadoop world. I mean, it's a, there's a lack of, of skill set. So talk about why that's important and how you guys are bringing those two together. I, I think that's an incredibly important point. There's this enormous skills divide between the guys that know how to write map produce jobs and you know the, the business analysts and, and the, the SQL-based application developers that know how to interact with SQL. And that was one of the core tenants when we started the company company uh, was how can we bring these worlds together uh, and that's effectively what we do. So we are accelerating production, uh, Hadoop into production by allowing business analysts and uh, current investments in SQL based tools to interact with data inside of Hadoop. And one example of that uh, is an integration with Tableau that we've done that we'll talk about a little bit later. Yeah, so, um, so you guys, um have talked a lot about this notion of connectors, right? But yep. connectors mean you got Hadoop and you're doing a lot of processing in, in, in Hadoop. People put it as the, you know, the batch yep. you know, platform. And then if you want, we were talking earlier about Larry Ellison talking about, okay, then extract it, bring it into Exadata or Exalytics or Exalogic, million dollar infrastructure, and then we'll make it real time. Yep. Um, talk about your vision of actually using commodity you know, components to yep. do that. Yeah, I mean, that, that's absolutely the future that we think is is a necessity and inevitable, which is that you know Hadoop itself is such a great underlying infrastructure. It has built-in fault tolerance and load balancing. It runs on inexpensive commodity hardware. It can scale, and it can store everything. So customers start to use it as really this supervised landfill. That's what one of our customers calls it, where they can just dump everything into this one place, collect it all there, and then perform the analytics in place on that data, and that's really what Hadap provides, is you no longer have to have those connectors between Hadoop, which is your, your low cost storage, your ETL tool, and then some data warehouse or data uh, analytics appliance, you can now actually do those analytics inside of that Hadoop cluster itself. All right, I, we'll be drilling down into this topic, oh, because I said before, this is a major theme that we've been tracking at uh, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon. Scott, can you talk about what you guys are announcing at this event? This is a big deal for you guys, yeah. sort, of, sort of coming out party and uh, talk about the, the product that you're announcing and then we'll, uh, we'll actually bring in Ted from uh, Tableau and talk about some of the integration you're doing. Absolutely, so um, a couple of things. We made our announcements last week and the focus of our announcements were about um, accelerating uh, Hadoop into enterprise deployments for production based upon interactive capabilities. So what you described about having this notion of moving beyond batch and giving folks the interactive capabilities to do investigative analytics amongst the data set via tools like SQL and Tableau. Um, so we announced the interactivity. We also announced what we're calling the Hadap Development Kit. 
And what that is is the ability for us to publish via SQL functions the advanced analytic ecosystem of Hadoop. So things like, there's a lot of talk about things like machine learning, how are and other advanced analytic tools. So we're able to publish those now via SQL function, enable customers, and as you mentioned earlier, business analysts to call upon them from basic SQL tools or from visualization tools like uh, Tableau. So how, paint a picture for how you would do this pre Adapt and post adapt. Yeah, great question. I think it's what Justin started to highlight and you mentioned earlier is in most worlds there were these silos. So you'd have a situation where you might do some exploratory analysis on a Hadoop platform and then once you found something that you might find to be somewhat interesting, you would create some structure out of that data and you'd ship it across to connect it to another platform and then you would iterate um, and ask analytic questions about the data. But unfortunately, in that sort of situation, there's no ability to do real investigative analytics, and there's no ability to take and drill into that source data because you've distilled all that and you've lost that because, again, you have these two disparate platforms. But now what we're enabling you to do is to say, I can, in one platform, find something that's interesting, drill into those results, and do that investigative analysis in that one single platform. So we can start with sort of the aggregates and drill into what's fascinating, you know, in, in an interactive fashion for the analyst. So let me introduce uh, Ted Wasserman, who's with Tableau. Ted, welcome to theCUBE. Thank thanks you very for, much. Thanks for coming on. Um, so uh, for those who don't know, Tableau is, is becoming the gold standard of visualization in this big data world, but you actually started before all this, you know, big data fervor you know, came about. But so, uh, before we get into uh, Tableau, Scott, I want to ask you, why, why Tableau? Why did you guys you know, partner with Tableau? What's that partnership all about? And then we'll ask Ted to comment. Sure, so I think, you know, it was the overwhelming choice when we talked to prospects and customers alike that were looking to do some advanced analytics and sort of walk down this big data path. It was overwhelmingly, we're interested in Tableau. We want to work with Tableau. I've had the pleasure to work with Tableau in a previous life as well, and so knowing um, what a good partner they are and how flexible they are in technology and how advanced the technology is was a perfect fit for us. So the trail that we're blazing in bringing these interactive applications on Hadoop to the enterprise and to production was a perfect fit with, with their vision and the, the company. So Ted, um, I mean, everybody's working with you guys. You got your big user conference coming up, That's and right. uh, and it's been growing year after year after year. To give us a quick update on Tableau and what you guys are doing with uh, with, with ADAPT. Right, absolutely. So our, our key mission is to help people see and understand data, no matter where it is. And a lot of our users are now bringing Hadoop into their environment. And that's great because it's allowing them to get access to huge volumes of data, which maybe they couldn't do before on a traditional relational database. However, one of the sort of issues with Hadoop is its, is its uh, latency, right? So Tableau provides a really fast and fluid analytics experience where you drag and drop depending on the types of questions you want to ask. With Hadoop, because of the latency, that sometimes gets slowed down, right? So sometimes even fairly basic queries take you know, a number of seconds to run before you get an answer back. And when you're in that analytic flow trying to ask different questions and ask follow-up questions, sometimes that little break between where you're trying to get the, qu the, the results back to see that sometimes breaks your analytical flow. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're very interested in working with vendors like Adopt who are building a really fast interface on top of Hadoop to be able to do deep analytics on. That's an interesting point you make. So it's about, it's about insights, not only insights, but in putting those insights in the hands of business users that can make decisions, but it's, a, it's about productivity of their workflow as well. Because you're absolutely right, if there's a break there, you're going to go do something else, and, and then you have to restart the, you know, the whole mental process. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, um, all right, and we have very limited time here, but uh, Scott and Ted, I'll ask you both. So paint a picture of the future for us. So this is sort of early days, right, yep. you guys? or startup, you got your funding, you put it together, you, you, know, you deliver the product. Where do you see this all, all going in the grand scheme of things? And put it into context of the traditional BI and, and data warehouse. Sure, thing. do you want to start off and I'll um, follow up? Sure, absolutely. So I, I think Hadoop is definitely a strategic platform for the future for doing massive um, analytics on huge amounts of data. Um, I, I see the platform maturing, so it's going to get faster, it's going to get more robust, it's going to get easier to use. And you know, the key for tools like Tableau is to be able to make that data available to any user who has questions and data, but don't have the know-how to write you know, scripting and, and, and programs to ask questions of their data. 
Okay, Scott. So now, what? So what about the legacy data warehouse world? Is it going to be yeah. like the mainframe? It'll be around forever, but uh, you know, won't get as much investment. What's your angle on that? I think that over time that will evolve, and I think that there will be pockets of that that will exist for quite some uh, some time in the future. But what I see in all the customers that I talk to and folks that we work with is there is absolutely a desire to push all of this advanced analytic capabilities into the hands of the knowledge worker. And so when I go out and see and talk to folks, it's about being able to, as Ted described, take these advanced analytic concepts and functions and put them in the hands of an analyst to where they can take and change the way that they interact with the data, the decisions that they make in their daily workflow or their process, and do so based upon you know real investigative analytics and based upon empirical insights. And I think that you know we will continue to see this permeate the industry and that the more people that get on the platform, it just further amplifies the necessity for something like Hadoop that is, ex you know, extremely parallel, fault tolerant, resilient, et cetera. And I think that's, you know, it's going to, to certainly supplant the legacy platforms in the market. So this is a theme that we're going to be tracking all week. A number of companies are attacking this problem in different ways. Adapt was really the first to, to really set out to solve this problem. We've got a product in the market now. So first of all, thank you gentlemen for coming on. I thank also you. want to thank our sponsors, uh, O'Reilly Media, thank you for having us here. Cloudera has been has been great, really this is, you know, it was the Hadoop World Conference and they've been really friendly to the Cube for a number of years at MapR, DataStax, uh, Hortonworks. Of course, Adapt, Opera, Squirrel, very interesting company, uh, doing uh, security, focused on security in, in big data, uh, Tableau, uh, and Rainstore. So, so keep it right there, we'll be right back. We're live from New York City, this is theCUBE at Strata plus Hadoop World. Right back. <laughs>